The woke police have arrived once again at the set of one of the most popular shows in television. Not this one, but that one. The Bachelor, you've heard about it. All those beautiful locations, the beautiful people, the casual sex. It's a pretty popular show, um, but they're ruining it. Just like the woke police and the far left are trying to ruin so much, so much. They're acting like this is a real serious situation, though, over there. It involves uh, Chris Harrison, the host, and something he said. We'll get to that in a moment. But again, this is very serious. Michael's exclusive interview with Bachelor host Chris Harrison. That's Harrison's first interview since stepping away from his signature franchise, Michael. Yes, George. And in the wake of the racism controversy that plagued the first season of the show featuring a black bachelor, I sat down with a longtime host to find out what was behind his contentious remarks. Wow, this does look pretty serious. George Stephanopoulos and then the exclusive and uh, the contentious remarks. All right, I'm going to take it from here for a moment, Michael. This is all about a contestant named Rachel who wore the wrong dress to a party about three years ago. Some folks are offended by the dress. Anything related to pre-Civil War South, if you engage in it in any way, you're a racist. And the host of this show, a guy who I never really noticed too much named Crispy Harrison, was interviewed about all this. And uh, he spoke from the heart and he said this. Well, Rachel, is it a good look in 2018 or is it not a good look in 2021? It's because not a, a big good difference. look ever because she's celebrating well, the old South. She's cel if I went to that party, what would I represent I, at that party? I don't, I don't disagree with you. You're 100% you're right in 2021. That was not the case in 2018. Again, I'm not defending Rachel. I just know that, I don't know, 50 million people did that in 2018 between, you know, it's like there were, that was a type of party. Again, I am not the woke police. There's plenty of people, plenty of people who will do that for us in this world right now. The woke police is out there and, and this poor girl, Rachel, who has just been thrown to the lions. I don't know how you are equipped when you have never done this before to be woke enough, to be eloquent enough, to be ready to handle this. I thought he was being totally reasonable in defending this uh, young woman who may have made a fashion mistake, again, Rachel wearing this dress to a antebellum themed party. Well, all hell broke loose after he said what he said, that perhaps she deserves a little bit of compassion before the whole world cancels some 20-year-old college student. That is not the right message in today's America, though. And he had to apologize big time because he's struggling to hold on to his job. I am saddened and shocked at how insensitive I was in that interview with Rachel Lindsay. And I didn't speak from my heart. And that is to say I stand against all forms of racism. And I am deeply sorry. I'm sorry to Rachel Lindsay. And I'm sorry to the black community. Wow. Uh, is, that's a lot of apologizing there. We all are against racism. We all are. Only a few idiots would be racist in America in today's day and age. But defending that young girl from being canceled, that's not race, race, sympathy for racists or anything like that. It's ridiculous. You know that. I know that. The world used to know that, but not anymore. And the other Rachel, the one who was interviewing him, who actually, I thought, did a fair job during that whole exchange, but something rubbed her the wrong way. During that conversation, he talked over me and at me. During that conversation, his privilege was on display. He never gave me room to talk, and he never gave me room to share my perspective. He wasn't trying to hear it. He was just trying to be heard. Well, he was being interviewed. I mean, she was interviewing him, uh, but she said a lot. She reacted. She was a little bit skeptical. She was uh, rolling her eyes once or twice. She said her piece as well. She made herself very clear. But she deserves an engraved apology, and she's getting one. And um, Chris Harrison still apologizing. I am not a victim here. I made a mistake, and I own that. <sighs> Racism, oppression, these are big dynamic problems, and they take serious work. And I am committed 
to that work. Harrison says he's been working closely with a, quote, race educator and strategist, along with faith leaders and scholars like Dr. Michael Eric Dyson. But Dr. Dyson often talks to me about counsel, not cancel. And that is full accountability, understanding what you didn't understand, owning that, learning from that, seeking counsel often in the community that you hurt. He's acting like he ran over a child uh, while he was drunk driving. This is way too much. He is being punished, though, again, barely holding on to his job. He's already been removed from the season finale. Also, he's got to hang around with that Michael Eric Dyson character that Strahan just mentioned. This guy's a piece of work. Why the rage, bruh? You, you, you're doing well, but you're a mean, mad white man. And you're going to get us right. And I have never seen so much wine and snowflaking. Jordan Peterson is suffering from anything except an exaggerated sense of entitlement and resentment. And his own privilege is invisible to him. And it's manifest with lethal intensity and ferocity right here on stage. <laughs> Jordan, I'm going to have to let you respond to that if you will. So the new uh, counselor that Mr. Harrison has is somebody who goes around calling white people during a debate angry white people, an angry white man. Wow, that's something, isn't it? All right, so you saw that Strahan was conducting the interview, but apparently um, Mr. Harrison just wasn't apologetic enough or Mike just wasn't buying it. His, his apology is his apology, but it felt like it got nothing more than a surface response on any of this. And obviously, he is the man who wants to clearly stay on the show, but only time will tell if there is any meaning behind his words. Wow. <laughs> okay. Yes, he'd like to keep his job. Is that okay, Michael? I know you've got like 15 jobs in television, and apparently Michael and ABC, uh, they're coming together on this. Strahan might be anchoring this show. Uh, ABC wants Michael Strahan to take over as Bachelor host, huh? Isn't that something? Now, this is not just happening, you know, with the elites. This happens at the depot, at the bus depot. This kind of racial silliness is starting to pervade everywhere. The good news is even liberals are figuring out that cancel culture doesn't work. This is crazy, and it needs to stop. Corporations are usually the last to get the memo. Maybe when they start losing money somehow in all this, they, uh, they'll snap back to normalcy. But um, anyway, folks, I want to talk about believing women. We should believe all women, right? Mainstream media will tell you, though, that only certain women are to be believed, especially those that are coming after conservative men. We saw that with Christine Blasey Ford. Remember her allegations against Judge Kavanaugh? The whole country stopped and watched those hearings. But what about Tara Reid? Do you even know who Tara Reid is? Tara Reid is a, uh, a woman who says she was sexually assaulted by Joe Biden in the early 1990s. Pretty serious allegation, received very little media coverage. She was available and nobody would interview her. Uh, the mainstream networks looked the other way, newspapers did. Finally, she went on Megyn Kelly, Megyn Kelly at the time, and I think she still does. She has this great video presentation on, on YouTube. And she made a pretty compelling case that she was assaulted by then-Senator Joe Biden. I remember going down the Russell Building floors. And so I don't know if I was in the first floor of the, or the basement, but there's corridors that lead to the Capitol and that kind of thing. And it happened all at once. So he had one hand underneath my shirt and the other hand um, I had a skirt on and he like went down my skirt and then went up. And I remember I was up almost on my tippy toes. And um, when he went inside the skirt, he was talking to me at the same time and he was leaning into me. And I pulled this way away from his head, I remember. And so he was kissing my neck area and he whispered, did I want to go somewhere else in a low voice? Bombshell allegations that were made in May of 2020 when Joe Biden was on his way to accepting the Democrat nomination. Joe Biden denied uh, all of these allegations, but they were made and they were serious and they were essentially ignored by 
most of the mainstream media. Those who ultimately did the story had it for many months before actually investigating and running the story. That's a problem. It's a big problem. And it shows the double standard that so many in the media have these days. Christine Blasey Ford couldn't even establish that she had ever met Judge Kavanaugh, but we had those hearings. It's a matter of record, I believe, that Tara Reid worked for Senator Joe Biden. It's more to her allegations, at least there's some supporting evidence that she at least knew him back then, unlike Christine Blasey Ford, why the difference of treatment. We're going to ask Tara Reid, our guest, in just a few moments. Please go on the record with the American people. Did you sexually assault Tara Reid? No, it is not true. I'm saying unequivocally, it never, never happened. And it didn't. It never happened. Do you remember her? Do you remember any any types of complaints that she might have made? I don't remember any type of complaint she <clears throat> may have made. It was 27 years ago. And uh, I don't remember, nor does anyone else that I'm aware of. And uh, the fact is that I don't remember. I, I, I don't remember any complaint ever having been made. So Tara Reid made that allegation, and it was essentially ignored by most of the mainstream media. They had the story for months, but they did not pursue it. Tara Reid ultimately wrote a book. Let's put it on the screen, please. It's called Left Out, When the Truth Doesn't Fit In. Uh, Tara Reid joins us right now. Tara, welcome to Newsmax. Thanks for being here. How are you? Oh, thank you. Thank you so much for having me. It's really good to be on your show. Oh, thank you. Um, you know, one thing I noticed about that interview, uh, mm -hmm. Mika asked Joe do you remember her? He didn't answer that. He just said he remembered no complaint. And I was just curious. I don't think Joe Biden has ever been asked, does he remember? And I think he does remember you. That's my takeaway because he skipped the question. Did you notice that when it happened? I did. I noticed a couple of things. Yeah. So let's go through it. Um, you made this allegation. Um, mm -hmm. But the thing that I am really appalled by, the left wing media embrace Christine Blasey Ford, yet they shunned correct. you, correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. Why do you think that and, is? And, and you know, I, I want to make it clear, you know, I, I was a lifelong Democrat um, and I am no longer. Um, I'm not a Republican, so I want to make that clear to your viewers. I'm an independent, so I'll vote, you know, my heart. But this was... Um, Heart-wrenching for me as a lifelong Democrat to be thrown aside. I believe that the elite Democrat Party um, uses the Me Too as a shield. And um, meanwhile, the hypocrisy is they're actually uplifting um, predators, sexual predators, and not only uplifting, but they're also enabling them and rewarding them with more power. I mean, Joe Biden has now advanced to the most powerful person in the Western world. And then you have, of course, the allegations that are coming forward about uh, Governor Cuomo, soon to be former Governor Cuomo, if he resigns or, you know, once that's happened. So regarding Joe Biden, now that he's president, uh, we're seeing a lot mm -hmm. more of him. Well, kind of. Um, has it, is it different for you? And, uh, Joe Biden, we showed he denies your allegations. Uh, but how has your life changed now that he's been in the Oval Office? I've heard of, you know, folks... Uh, you can be traumatized all over again. Has this happened to you? It's been devastating. It's been very re-traumatizing. I can't really put it into words what it feels like to hear his name over and over and over again, except that I try to turn off the news a lot. I, I try to stay connected, but I pick and choose how I do that. And, um, you know, I think it's very important that I um, remain connected to my country and to what's going on. But, yeah, definitely it's it's taken its toll. When I came out, um, you know, Joe Biden and the DNC, the Democratic National Committee, weaponized the media against me. I was smeared, attacked, social media trolled, threatened. My life was threatened. My daughter and I were stalked. And um, the way the tone was set but was by the New York Times. And um, I don't know if you're aware, but my attorney filed something with the New York Times, a demand for correction of the record. And also um, some, you know, some something to address the fact that they accidentally uh, posted my social security number in the headline of the New York Times first article. 
So the New York Times ultimately did the story, their version of it, and so mm -hmm. did the Washington Post. They had the story Correct. for a long time, and yes. uh, they kind of held their nose. They were reluctant to do it. Contra compare that to Christine Blasey Ford. Not only did the Washington Post do the story, but congressional hearings were held. We have her mm -hmm. uh, We saw with the hand up. You know, the whole country watched. Mm -hmm. And I noticed something else, that she seemed to have a lot of support, a lot of lawyers, a lot of aides. Another photo, she's yeah. kind of surrounded by all these helpers. When you came yes. forward with your story, who was with you? Who was by your side? Well, no one. <laughs> I mean, I came forward, but there were six other women, seven other women, actually, that came forward before me about um, sexual harassment. So I thought I was coming forward, you know, with them. Um, but people are very afraid of Joe Biden's power, and I think that's one of the issues that has kept people from coming forward. Even one of my cooperating witnesses is terrified, especially the way I've been ripped apart. Um, and you notice that Blasey Ford, Dr. Ford, was not treated in the same way at all. The Me Too movement was behind her. Celebrities were behind her. Um, everyone rallied. Kamala Harris made a very vehement statement um, that he was not qualified. Yeah. And now she's Joe Biden's vice president. So, so I remember, I think yeah. Sports Illustrated gave, gave her a Woman of the Year award. It was just over the top with the awards and that kind of thing. Now, unlike Christine Blasey Ford, who could not establish any kind of connection to Judge Kavanaugh, you actually could establish that you worked for Joe Biden. You were there. That was not disputed. Now, there was a phone call made to Larry King, reportedly by your mother. I, I want to play this clip and then we'll talk about it. Okay. I'm wondering what um, uh, a, a staffer uh, would do, do besides go to the press in Washington. My daughter has just left there uh, after working for a prominent senator and could not get through with her problems at all. And the only thing she could have done was go to the press and she chose not to do it out of respect for him. Was that your mother? Yeah, I always get emotional when I hear it because my mother died of a rare form of throat cancer. So she lost a lot of her ability to talk like she normally did. And she had a beautiful voice. Um, she was, you know, it's it was kind of like she reached across space and time to, to give me a hug and say, I'm here. Um, that was a really um, momentous moment to hear that call again. At the time, I'm sad to say I was mad at my mother because I was so scared of Joe Biden. I was mad she even made the phone call. She was trying to get the courage to, you know, say what happened. But, you know, of course, she she uh, just said what she said. And um, there was really no mechanism or platform or way to come forward then. And, you know, I was told quite clearly by Evelyn Lieberman's had a, an assistant press secretary in Joe Biden's office. And he and I had told reporters in 2019 about this, but he had told me when I filed the sexual harassment report, he said, you know, we will effing destroy you. And they did three times. Um, you know, I, my career ended um, for lack of another word um, in 93. I was forced to resign. I was told I wasn't a good fit after I filed the sexual harassment complaint. Um, and, you know, it, I was not able to get another job in D.C. And then in 2019, when the other women bravely came forward, I really felt it was time for me to say something. My daughter was grown, and, um, and I thought I could go to Time's Up for assistance, okay. and Time's Up did not help me. So before you got here, in the earlier part of the mm -hmm. show, I played the... Um, your allegation, uh, as you described it, to mm -hmm. Megyn Kelly. Um, but if you don't mind, could you tell us again, um, what do you say Joe Biden did to you? You were working on his staff, and I understand um, you were performing an errand, and you say something yes. terrible happened. Yes, I was bringing him um, his gym bag, and um, it happened, and I'd, I'd really rather not um, go into the details. Um, I've gone into it at length at the Megyn Kelly interview, so I'd just like to refer back to that. Um, but it was it was a very traumatizing um, assault, and what he said to me after the assault was even more traumatizing. Um, you know, he uh, uh, after I had pulled away and everything, and he had said, "Come on, man, I heard you liked me," and he had said different various things, and one of them is not suitable for you know. Um, this broadcast, but he said certain things to me. Um, he said, 
he got angry with me when I pulled away and he obviously, I wasn't going to go off with him. And he said, you know, you're, you mean nothing to me. You're nothing. Yeah. That's, and, um, he walked away. And I think that as much as the assault, those words haunted me for a long time. And the next thing I remember is my whole body was shaking and I was in the hallway and I was trying to, you know, just figure out a way home and, and the rest, you know, you know about. So we it was saw, very, very disheartening. We just showed a picture of you. I think this is your ID mm -hmm. to Capitol Hill, yeah. signed by the Sergeant mm -hmm. of Arms. It's an official identification. So yeah. I do remember, I heard, I believe, that you made a report at the time uh, to some sort of HR office, uh, but it didn't go anywhere, and you didn't specify in writing the details of what happened? Um, well, it was more like an intake form. And, you know, people have always asked me that, but it was very intimidating. I went to this outside office and it was a very big step. So I went ahead and wrote just the basics. And I remember I had to get, um, I had to give the name of someone and I gave my cooperating witness that I had told her about the assault and whatnot as well. And she remembers waiting on her because she was back at college at that time, waiting for the phone call. Um, you know, but they never called, yeah. but I, um, filled out like a form. It was one page and they were going to get back to me. And then there would be like, they would talk with me in person. And that's where I wanted to talk about the assault. I went into a little bit of the harassment, but very little as I recall. I believe and, um, I'm not even sure because back then we didn't use that vernacular as much. It was used much less. Right. So I'm, I, I think I just put the circumstances down and talked about feeling uncomfortable and things like that. So did you, uh... Did the FBI ever come and talk to you about this after you made your allegations last year public? Uh, I believe they got involved in the Christine Blasey Ford allegations. Did they ever go to you? No. In fact, what I was told when I made, because I made a police report um, this um, last year in 2020, and I said, well, I wasn't sure if I could make a police report, but I'm getting death threats and I want something on record. I want a mechanism to, for safety because after coming forward, I was getting so many death threats. And the Capitol Police, um, I mean, the, excuse me, the Metro Police took the report and because it was outside the statute of limitations, um, you know, it remains yeah. just like a report and not active, but they have it. Um, I went to the FBI for help because my computer was hacked. I was threatened. My life was threatened. But they have never interviewed me about Joe Biden, only the Metro Police that I went to. Uh, I don't have much more time. Why didn't you make the allegation? I know you, you, told, you talked about what happened in the early 90s, but later, say 2008, 2012, he's vice president. He's running for vice president. Why not back then? There was no way to do that back then as far as a mechanism. And my daughter was little um, and in school, I just didn't feel strong enough. I did tell a friend who's been on the record about me telling her about the assault and how it made me feel. And at the time, I, I voted for Obama. I was a very hardcore Democrat, and he happened to be on the ticket. I wanted to find a way to come forward, but my daughter was, you know, in junior high and going into high school. I just, I couldn't. And, yeah. and I didn't know who to talk to. There was really, it's really hard. Like people say, why didn't you come forward? It's not that easy. And you saw it took over 36 days for my story to get to the media. Um, you know, it takes, a, it's, it's, it takes effort. And if you're just a civilian, it's difficult to get your story forward. I want to put your book up again. It's called Left Out, okay. When the Truth Doesn't Fit In. So Tara Reid, you've written your book. These allegations uh, have been public for a little less than a year now. Um, mm -hmm. He's president. What do you want to happen? What can happen? Where, where do we go from here? Well, I, I've been talking in general about rape culture in America and just not and holding powerful men accountable regardless of their party, regardless of who they are. Um, but I've always said I would go under oath if there was a congressional hearing and investigation, I would go under oath. So I guess we'll leave it in the hands of legislatures, of the legislator, if they want to, uh, you know, bring forward an investigation against Joe Biden. But in my opinion, he's not qualified. Well, that's what they did for uh, Christine Blasey Ford and Judge Kavanaugh. And a president mm -hmm. is a lot more important than an associate justice of the Supreme Court. If they did it then. They probably should have done it last year, and they probably should still do it now. Tara yes. Reid, we thank you very much for joining us. 
Thank you for having me on your show. I really appreciate it. You bet. Have a good night. You bet. Take care, you too, and we'll be right back. You just watched Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing cable news channel now in more than 70 million homes. You can get Newsmax TV on your cable system or check your cable guide. And if your system doesn't carry Newsmax, call them, tell them you want Newsmax TV because we're real news for real people.